Okay, so good day. So for today, we will be discussing the interaction design that we need to understand and conceptualize. So it's a topic in human-computer interaction. So let's have a recap first that HCI has moved beyond designing interfaces for desktop and machine. So it's already uh, embedded into different types of machines that including our desktop. So the, those interfaces are already seen. It's already seen in our desktops and including laptops, mobile computers, and including machines. So about extending and supporting all manner of human activities in all places, HCI and interaction design are already there. When we are facilitating user experience through designing interaction, we should make work effective, efficient, and safer. Improve and enhance learning and training. Provide enjoyable and exciting entertainment. Enhance communication and understanding. Support new forms of creativity and including the expression. So why we need to understand uh, this very important thing? Una, what do you want to create? No? Anong gustong gawin? What are your assumptions or we call it the targets or the goals? Then what it will achieve, what you hope it will. So what is an assumption? Assumption is when we are taking something for granted when it is further for investigation. For example, the people will want to watch TV while driving. Okay? So when you're relaxing, you want to watch movies in your cell phones. So we call it assumptions. When you have a free time, you want to play computers. Okay? You want to play games in those specific computers. So what is a claim? So claim is stating something to be true when it is still open to question. Example, multimodal style of interaction for controlling the GPS, global positioning system. So one that involves speaking while driving is safe. Okay, so pag nakakapagsalita ka when you're calling something, uh, you are not holding a certain device, meaning it's an interactive device, or let's say a controlling device, it is safe. Unlike doon sa medyo maano ka, madidistract ka, you're holding the phone, etc., etc., it would be very, literally, ano, no, a big problem when you are focusing on something. So a framework for analysis that the problem space is, are there problems with an existing product or user experience? If so, what are those specific problems? So how do you think there are problems? What you need to gather for the specific problems? So how do you think your proposed design ideas might overcome this? So if you are designing for a new user experience, how do you think you propose design ideas? Support change or extend the current ways of doing things? In a specific problem space, we need to design ideas that may might overcome those presence. Cell phone dati, black and white ang screen. Okay? The purpose is only for text and call and computations, calculations, no more. But for right now, majority of our cell phones are in the interactive of touch screen generation with multimedia applications, with cameras. Specifically, we can also play videos. So, nagkaroon na ng improvements. So, what are the assumptions and claims made about the 3D TV? So, ang 3D or three-dimensional television is once that you wear the 3D glasses, it's like the pictures or the objects moving coming from you are, let's say, in real. Okay? Parang totoo. 
So in assumptions, we have realistic or the wish list. So people would not mind wearing the glasses that are needed to see in 3D in their living rooms. That would be reasonable. So people would not mind paying a lot more for a new 3D enabled TV screen. Not reasonable. Bakit? Because some of them cannot afford. Some of them are not fan of three dimensionals. Some of them are willing to watch on mobile devices, not on a television. Bakit? Much portable. So people would really enjoy the enhanced of clarity and color detail provided by 3D. That would be reasonable. Mas maganda ang graphics. Mas high definition. Mas complete ang details. Yun ang pwede ng reason. But for buying them for a reasonable price or not reasonable price, would be unexpected. So people will be happy carrying around their own special glasses. So kailangan may glasses ka when you are watching 3D. So reasonable only for a very select bunch of users. So what are the benefits of conceptualizing? The benefits of conceptualizing is how we do orientation. When we're talking about orientation, it's the design team to a specific question about how to conceptual model and will be understood. It would be followed by an open-minded that prevents design teams from becoming narrowly focused early on. And the common ground would you allow the design team to establish a set of commonly agreed terms. When we are talking about the agreed terms, we are talking about now. So for problem space through the design space, is having a good understanding of the problem space can help inform the design space. For example, what kind of interface, behavior, functionality needed to provide. But before deciding upon this, it is important to develop what we call the conceptual model or the target concepts among that we are creating. So what is a conceptual model? Based on Johnson and Henderson, it is a high-level description of how system is organized and operate. So meaning how system was being developed and how it would operate. So enables designers to straighten out their thing before the start laying out the widgets or the design or the user interface. Components that includes the metaphors and the analogies. So what are those? Based on the definition here, it would be understanding what a product is for and how to use it for an activity. Concepts that people are exposed to through the product. For example, task domain objects, their attributes and operations, including savings, revisiting, and organizing. For the relationship and mapping between this concept, components are very important. For a certain user interface could achieve its usability functions. So first step in formulating a conceptual model, ito yung mga steps when you are creating conceptual model, is what will be the user be doing when carry out their task. Task specified. How will the system support this? So meaning, whatever the system that we want to use, is it a support to those specific tasks that we will be carrying out? So what kind of interface metaphor, if any, will be appropriate based on the tasks that we are gathering or we will be creating? Because what kinds of interaction modes and styles to be used? Always keep in mind when making design decision, an interface design, how the user will understand the underlying conceptual model, the concepts itself. So there are many kinds and ways of classifying them. We describe them in terms of the core activities that is already been created and the objects. Also in the interface metaphor or the user interface. The interface metaphor is conceptualizing what we are doing or what we're doing in the web or whatever functionality that you want to do 
on a specific computer. So a conceptual model instantiated at the interface, focus on the interface. For example, the desktop metaphor. You'll be seeing our desktop, there are a lot of desktop icons, those types of images can be seen in our desktop computers as be considered as one of the interface metaphor, a conceptualized model that has been created by Microsoft. Then we have the visualizing and operation, an icon of a shopping cart for placing items. So, so there's a lot of things regarding with the materials metaphor. For example, this one in Google, we have the cart is very very popular or uh, user interface. Why as a familiar form factor? Because properties are added giving appearance and physical behavior. For example, the surface of a paper okay so when we're talking about the surface of a paper meron tayong tinatawag na google now card for example this one we'll be seeing the temperature the latest trends it's like a tab news that happening right now so kaya mas maganda nga rin ang interface ni google ngayon 2021 so the activity is we are describing the components now. So later on, we will be creating this as a week worksheet assessment task for number three. So we will be describing the components of shopping cart, proceeding to check out in one click, gift wrapping, and cash still. Now, let's proceed again with the interface metaphor. So it is designed to be similar to a physical entity but also has own properties. Example, desktop metaphors, yung mga web portals, can be based on activity object or a combination of the both. Then we have the exploit users, familiar knowledge, helping them to understand the unfamiliar, yung mga hindi ka familiar, not related into, you are not experienced to use it, well experienced, no? So there are things that uh, very helpful, especially those types of interfaces, yung mga tinatawag natin user-friendly. Conjures up the essence of the unfamiliar activity, enabling the user to leverage on his understanding or aspect to unfamiliar functionality. Because those things like yung unfamiliar functionality is the human can adapt because of experience. If he already have seen those types of interfaces into other devices and then he will be used a new devices with the same interfaces experience will teach so the benefits of interface metaphor would be make learning new system easier then it will help users to understand the underlying conceptual model followed by it would be very innovative and enable the realm of computers and their applications to be made more accessible to a greater diversity of the users. So in short, when we are understanding the underlying conceptual model, it's very important for us specific benefits in the interface metaphors. So what would be the problem with this interface metaphors? Una, break conventional and cultural roles. So recycle bin placed on the desktop, etc., etc., because of the cultural rules. Hindi tayo pare-parehas yan. Majority of the countries, hindi pare-parehas. Kagaya nga nito, bawal ang Facebook sa China. So can constrain designers in the way they conceptualize a problem in a specific space. Conflict with the design principles. Minsan, di nagkakasundo sa layout designs. Forces the user to understand the system in terms of the metaphor. Designers can inadvertently use bad existing design and transfer the bad parts over. So limit designer's imagination in coming up with new conceptual models also. For the interaction types, we have what we call the instructing, which is issuing a command or selecting options. Conversing naman is conversion, conversation, pag-uusap. Manipulating is how we control it. No? 
interacting with the objects and virtual or including the physical space by controlling them. Then we have exploring. Your exploring naman is, is for you to move through the virtual environment of a physical space. You are exploring. So instructing, where users instruct a system and tell it what to do. For example, tell the time, print a file, save a file. That would be an instructing metaphor. So very common conceptual model underlying a diversity of device and system. What are example? Word processors. In a file, in mga virtual reality machines. Okay, and then we have the bending machines. So it is instructing instructing machines with instructing layouts. So the main benefit of that instructing is the support quick and the efficient interaction. So good for uh, repetition kinds of action performed on different multiple objects. So which is ECS, for example. Ito yung mga latest ngayon. No? Itong nasa right side, ito, yung makikita nyo sa trinoma tsaka sa SM. North. Okay? So, ganito na ngayon. Bira na ako makakita ng ganito. Okay? So, ito nakikita ko. Kasi dito makikita mo kung may stock o wala. So, how will you do it? Insert the money here and then it will appear if the money is already consumed and already credited. Then you need to choose. What will you choose? Yan. Type mo. A1, A2, A3, A4, and what's the event. Matatype mo dyan. Tapos, lalabas yan. Unlike here, one, you need just to press this button. Mas madali ito. So, when you insert, you just press this button and lalabas na yan. Unlike this one, you need to check it by columns and rows to target the letters na type mo. Kasi ito, you need to simply press the button. So, in conversing, there should be an underlying model of having a conversation with another woman. Range from simple voice recognition, the menu driving system, to more complex that include natural language and dialogues. Example, it includes timetable, search engines, advice giving system, and health systems. Also, virtual agents such as toys and pet robots designed to converse with you. Makikipag-usap. For example, this one, ang mga virtual assistants like yung kay Anna. Okay? So, it's a UK. We have the Google Voice, the Google Assistant. You have Cortana in Microsoft. We have Siri in Apple. So, those are what they call conversing. So, we have the pros and the cons of conversational model. So una, it allows user, users, especially the beginners and the technophobes, may mga trauma sa computers, no? natatakot gamitin, to interact with the system in a way that is familiar. So makes them feel comfortable at ease and less scared. Misunderstanding can arise when the system does not know how to parse what the user sees. Then we should move on to manipulating. For the manipulating, it involves dragging, selecting, opening, closing, zooming actions on a virtual object. There should be an exploit users also for knowledge of how they move and manipulate in the physical world. Controlling. So it can involve actions using, using physical controllers. Mouse, keyboard, like in the window, of our gestures, even our PlayStation, which is a wireless. So there should be a controller, manipulating. So tag as physical objects, yung mga sample yung mga track balls or balls that are manipulated by physical world, result in physical and digital events, including the animations, yung mga tablets that we see for them now. Direct manipulation, if we have the DM, like what the Scheinderman in 1983 coined at the term DM, came from his fascination with computer games. So let's start with the direct manipulation for those computer games. Then we have physical action and button, pressing 
instead of issuing commands with complex syntax, followed by rapid reversible action with immediate feedback on object of interest. So why are the DM interfaces are enjoyable? Una, the novices can learn the basic functionality quickly. Experienced users can work extremely rapidly to carry out a wide range of tasks, even defining new functions. Intermittent users can retain operational concepts over time. Error message, rarely needed. Users can immediately see if their actions are furthering their goals and if not, do something else. User experience, less anxiety or less problem for those who are using. Users gain confidence and mastery and feel control of those specific tasks. So what are the disadvantages naman? Una, some people take a metaphor or direct manipulation to Literally, not all tasks can be described by objects and not all actions can be done directly. Limited. Some tasks are better achieved through delegating, like spell checking, etc., etc. Can become a screen space gobblers. Moving a mouse around the screen can be slower than pressing function keys to do same functions. Function keys, tama kasi ng keyboard, is mabilis talaga. Then, we have the exploring. Exploring or involves a user moving through a virtual or physical environments. So the physical environments with embedded sensor technologies, sensors, Arduinos. So which conceptual model is the best? Direct manipulation, issuing the instruction, having conversion, or hybrid conceptual models. So the conceptual models of interaction and interface, we need to see the interaction type. For example, on a specific system, instructing, talking, browsing, or other, would it be literally helpful to a specific users? The interface type, it would be used to support the mode, speech, menu base, and including the gesture or sensors, okay? motion sensors, gestures. So many kinds of interface type available including command type, yung speech, data entry, form fill in, query, graphical presentation, web, pen, augmented reality and including virtual reality, and the gesture or the motion. So which interaction type to choose? You need to determine the requirement and the user needs. Compatible yun diyan ng mga hindi nakakatayo, walang kamay. So at least you will know what is the very important metaphors that you will be using. So pwede virtual, anin virtual, yun speech, text to speech, or even let's say speech to text, vice versa. Take budget and other constraints into account. Also, will depend on the suitability of technology for activity being supported. May tinatawag natin compatibility issue. So this is covered in course when designing conceptual models. Covered ba siya? Kasi it's very important what we are we are what we are creating. It's not what we are developing for something lang. There should be the specific purpose on why we are creating this. It would be helpful. So in the paradigm, inspiration for a conceptual model, we have the general approach adopted by a community for carrying out the research. Una, shared assumptions, concepts, values, and practices. Desktop, or we call it the ubiquitous computing in the wild. Those types of technology right now we are developing is really, no, is really good in terms of the infrastructures and desktop layout designs. 
mga gaming computers, even the keyboard and mouse, lahat RGB na. May ilaw na lahat. So there are examples of the new paradigms. Navigious computing, mother of them all. Persuasive computing. Wearable computing. Tangible bits or we call it the augmented reality. Attentive environment and transparent computing. So what are the vision of this? So a driving force that frames research and development invites people to imagine what life will be like in 10, 15, or 20 years. So what are the future technologies? Example, the Apple's 1987 Knowledge Navigator, smart cities, smart health, provide concrete scenarios on how society can use the next generation of imagining technologies. Also raise many questions concerning privacy and including the trust. Kaya nga nagkaroon na tayo ng Data Privacy Act of 2012 because majority of our data and information was already in the web. Lahat nandiyan na pinapasok. So data privacy is concerning for that. For the theory of that, there should be an explanation of phenomena. So the information processing that explain how the mind or some aspect of it is assumed to work or to fit, can help identify factors, yung mga cognitive, social, and effective relevant to the design and evaluation of interactive products. Dahil cognitive aspects or emotions are very important also, okay? especially when we are seeing some designs. May mga design kasi na nakaka-stress, mga layouts na yan, na hindi mo alam paano gamitin. So it would be uh, additional pop up stress with a specific users. So there would be the significance of the simplification of the HCI phenomenon. So intended to make it easier for the designer to predict and evaluate alternative design in case there should be a problem with the design layout that has been created. So the abstracted from a theory coming from a contributing discipline for example, in psychology, we have the keystroke model. So what are the framework of this? Set of interrelated concepts and or specific questions for what to look for. So in Norman's conceptual model, Benford's trajectory, there are many interaction design was being made. Totoo naman yun. Ang daming design nagawa pero yung iba hindi maintindihan. Kailangan ng expert level for you to understand. Even yung mga pag-assemble ng mga gamit. Diba? So it is what we call the interaction of design. The layout must be considered depending on the experience that we already have. But basically, there's always a user's manual. So that is provided advice on how to design. Step questions, concept challenges, principle tactics, and including dimensions. So, a new framework of human-computer interaction in Rogers in 2009. There are concerns past and the future. For the frame of preference, the users would be majority of the future would be the context. For the method theory and perspective, we're talking about the scientific approach and the interaction design. So, it would be pluralistic and mixing. Output would be ethnographies and models, tools for analysis, including the design guidelines. So the outputs could be considered for the future would be the insights, creating new way of experience, new technologies, and value-based analysis. To summarize this, that developing a conceptual model involves good understanding of the problem space, specifying what is good you are doing why and how it will support the users. The very most important thing is how does this design will be supported okay, by the users. A conceptual model is a high level of description of a product in terms of what users can do with it and the concept they need to understand how to interact with it. So the interaction types, Conversing, instructing, provide a way of thinking about how, how best to support user activities 
and the paradigms of vision theories, models, and frameworks that provide different ways of framing and informing design and research. So the most important thing about developing conceptual model is how you will be supporting, okay, supporting the needs of the users for this generation. And of course, we expect it for the next future. So, paano magagamit? The innov innovative of technologies would really help the users. But let me say one, once again that, that's, that this innovation is very important. And it's very important also for the users to learn from it. So, that's why meron tayong mga sinasabing kaakibat na ang pagbabago ay dapat ay sinasabayan hindi dapat tayo laging ng papa huli. So now we will be discussing the social interaction in interaction design or human-computer interaction. So what are the overviews of this? Una, for you being a socialized, we have the face-to-face -face conversations, the remote conversations, the telepresence, co-presence, and including the shareable technologies. So the conversational mechanism is the various mechanisms and rules are followed when holding a conversation. Example, yung hi, specific there, all right, good, how is it going, fine, how are you? So we call it a conversational mechanism. Okay, so this type would be more on the artificial intelligence right now Iba marami ng supports nito, including yung mga chatbot kung tawagin. So, in being social, an f to f conversation is being superseded by our social media interaction. Totoo naman yun eh. Kaya nga meron tayong tinatawag na ano ngayon, new normal. The new normal is when we are communicating. Diba? When we are communicating each other in terms of what? Face to face with the use of the internet connection through a network. So how many friends do you have on Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. versus the real life? Marami kang friends sa Facebook, pero what? Sa totoo, iilan lang yan. Okay? So being socialized, we're talking about social communication. How much are the overlap? How are the ways we live in the interact with one another changing? So are there established rules and etiquette still applicable on online and offline? That is one question. Lumindol. Post agad sa Facebook. Hindi mo alam na lumindol. Kasi nga, tulog ka. Pero nalaman mo dahil nakita mo sa Facebook. It's about the social communication. It's about the social updates in those type of social media. So the conversational rules that sucks, etc. The author, that they are saying that work on conversation analysis describe the three basic rules. Rule one. The current speaker chooses the next speaker by asking an opinion, question, or request. Rule number two. Another person decides to start speaking. And rule number three. The current speaker continues talking and talking. So turn talking used to coordinate for the conversation. There are two specific persons who are communicating. So shall we meet at 8 o'clock? Mm. Can we meet a bit later? So shall we meet at 8? Wow, look at him. Yes, what a funny heard. So uh, can we meet a bit later? So these types of conversation are coordinated. So back channeling to a signal continue the following response. So more conversation rules are the farewell rituals. Bye-bye, see you. Okay, so bye-bye, see you later. Okay, meron pa. Asang ka na? On the way na, pero nalilibi pa na. Implicit and explicit cues. Looking at watch. Fidgeting with coat and bugs. Then we have, oh dear, must go. Look at the time I'm late. So, conversation rules. Breakdown in those conversations are when someone says something that is misunderstood. For example, Speaker will repeat with emphasis. Is this one? No, I meant that one. Also use the tokens. Huh? What? Etc. Etc. So these types of breakdown in conversations 
are can be seen in those type of face-to-face -face conversion. But right now, the face-to-face -face conversion right now, even the doctors, no, we have the teleconsultation. This type of consultation is through virtual. So what happened in social media conversation? So, it's those same conversational rules apply. Nandiyan pa rin yan. Are there more breakdowns? So, diyan mo makikita yung mga jejemon, emo, di ba? Yung mga emo and whatsoever. How do people repair them for? Una, we have the phone communication through email, instant messaging, texting, or even Skyping, Viber, etc., etc. So, the remote conversation for that is much research on how to support conversation when people are at a distance from each other. So many applications have been developed. Email, video conferencing, video phones, instant messaging, including the chat rooms. Do they mimic or move beyond existing ways of conversing? Hindi. So in early video phones and visual phones, ganyan. Nagkaroon ng communication pathway, telepono, alam nyo naman ang itsura ng telepono dati. So, one of British telecom early video phones and early mobile visual phone developed in Japan. So, for example, dati kasi ang mode of communication is through a radio frequency. Okay, so, ang communication pat nila is there is a over, over, diba? Mga walkie-talkie. Tapos meron pa yung mga encrypted, yung mga Morse code okay, for encrypted communication. So the video window system or the bell point in 1989 shared space that allowed people 50 miles apart to carry on conversation as in the same room, drinking and coffee together. So three by eight pit picture of windows between two sides with the video and audio. So people did interact via the window, but strange things happened. So the sketch of the window of this window, uh, the video window of this is like this. So findings on how video window system was being used. So una, it talked constantly about the system. It spoke more than other people in the same room rather than in the other room. When tried to get closer to someone in other place had opposite effect. When out of range of camera and microphone, no way of monitoring this. Kasi it is a pathway communication through cabling system. Then we have the Skype success. 20 something, this 20 or millennia, global household name. Seeing others on screen enables March intimacy to the audio phone, much better way of communication. Enables people to get to know each other and better. Less awkward for young children. Kasi merong mga kakaibang types of communication or social media, no? Na mga pang dating apps, hindi ba? Medyo may mga pang uh, nudity, etc., etc. So 3D virtual worlds, we have the second life in 2007. It's more than over 8 million users. So what kind of conversation takes place in this environment? VOIP versus chatroom talk. Okay? So, voice in the internet versus chat room talk. Ano yan? Yung voice over the internet is, yan, example natin. Itong Zoom, Google Meet, Skype, Comprog, Yahoo Messenger. We are uh, transmitting our voice in the internet. So, Facebook and Twitter also in Messenger. So, everyone uses them. So, what is there and to learn? Use in emergencies, demos, and etc. Example, users spread up to the minute info and retweet about how a wildfire or gas plume is moving. Basa sa Twitter, yun din dun lang eh, but can also start or fuel rumors. O ayan, yung sa mga fake news by adding news that is old or incorrect. More confusing than helpful. Yung iba na stress na because of the social media content about COVID, etc., etc., so we have the telepresence. So this is a new technology designed to allow a person to feel as if they were present in the other location. So projecting their body movements, action, voice, and facial expressions to the other location or person. Okay, then we have the superimposed images and other person on specific workspace. <coughs> 
we have hyper mirror morikawa and may sapo in 1998 it allows people to feel as if they are in the same virtual place even though in physically different spaces augmented reality mga hologram so people in different places are superimposed on the same screen to make them appear as in the same place mga virtual background di ba ngayon so woman in the white sweater is different room to the other three So creating personal space in a hyper mirror. So if you'll be seeing this, there are two in the rooms are invading the virtual personal space of the other person by appearing to be physically on top of the woman in the white sweater. So two in the room move apart to allow person in other space more virtual personal space. So everyone is happy. Ngayon, uso na yan, di ba? Yung mga apps na din yan. Iba nga nilalagay niyo yung mukha niyo doon para sumayaw. Eh. So we have the B reality also. So the B reality is when uh, they are communicated. Meron niya yung mga bago, no? yung in-invento noong around 2016, yung holograms technologies. So rogate robot at a meeting seating between two physically present people. Then we have the people's vote attending CHI. Telepresence room. Mga Cisco system entry permission ginagamit yan even in the high industries. So how much realism? So it's needed in telepresence to make it compelling. So the telepresence rooms try make the remote people appear to be lifelike by using multiple high definition cameras with eye tracking features and directional microphones. Pero some of our microphones are what? With noise cancellation. Is Skype just as good? Actually, Skype talaga is maganda dati. So in coordination and mechanism, when there are a group of people up or interact together, they need to coordinate themselves. Example, playing football and navigating a ship. Coordination. So they use verbal and non-verbal communication. Schedule the rules and convention. Shared external representations. So the co-presence are technologies that enables co-located groups to collaborate more effectively when working, learning, and socializing. Example, smart boards, surfaces, we, and Kinect. In the F2F coordinating mechanism, talk is central. Pag-uusap. Nonverbal also uses emphasize as substitute. Shakes, winks, glances, gestures, and giving hand raising. Formal meetings, explicit structures such as agendas, the memos, and minutes are employed to coordinate the activity. The awareness of the mechanism of this are involves knowing who is around, what is happening, and who is talking with whom. Peripheral awareness, keeping an eye on things happening in the periphery of vision. Overhearing and overseeing allows tracking of what others are doing without explicit cues. So low-tech awareness of this mechanism, in, out, in the lab, at the lunch, sample of this one. So designing technology to support awareness is very important because the workspace awareness, the up-to-the-moment understanding of another person interaction with the shared workspace. Yung mga rectable and reflectable. Yun. Reactable experience. Diba? Virtual reality na lang eh. And even augmented reality. Yan, yung mga reflectable. Dynamo system also. Ngayon, hindi lang. Nagiging dynamo system kahit wala yung pinatawag ng dynamic system. Di ba? So... Basta maraming screen, okay na, no? Notification system, we also have the bubble or user notify other to oppose to be in constantly monitoring. Maraming kayo notifications na, di ba? May notifications sa Facebook, sa Skype, sa Shopee, sa Grab, and what's on and so forth, like the applications right now running in your cell phones. So provide information about shared objects and progress of collaborative tasks. Then we have the Sapoko, so show who is where and who is meeting with who. So what would be the next? 
the next would be a perpetual sharing and broadcasting the information knowledge and personal content. Live blogging, nandiyan na yung mga blogging sa mga bloggers sa YouTube. Recording everything is one and live sharing. Micro chatting, beyond Twitter and Snapchat. Marami na ngayon. Those types of social communications through the human-computer interaction and those types of technology devices are using right now. Majority of the YouTube developer content, mga content developer na yan, they're sharing their life. Di ba? Every day. What happened to them? And we are watching. And it's a part of human-computer interaction by communicating with the machines and computer. Okay? And that's why people are there doing the things that they want and they want it to be posted on the social media. And we are aiming for it. So in summary, social mechanisms like turn talking conventions, etc. enable us to collaborate and coordinate our activities. Keeping aware of what others are doing and letting others know what you are doing are important aspects of collaborative working and socializing. So many technology systems have been built to support telepresence and co-presence. 